Good morning. It is July the second. See, I knew that date. Uh, here I am driving to work again. So this is July. I want to talk about all the lot of things going on in the world of da -na -da -na, Kickstarter. All right, because you know apparently the summer months are big time for Kickstarter. People are doing a lot of Kickstarter. Uh, one of my favorite guys, um, Rune. The guys um, are doing. We're doing Rune. Just put out their Kickstarter, and I'm very excited. I put my money down, of course. I've been a big fan of the setting from when I first saw it. I just, you know, I always said I thought visually that setting was was amazingly cool. I was like, oh, I like this. I don't know what this is, but I like it. Looks cool. I like it. And then they describe themselves as being storm punk. I'm like, I don't even know what that means, but I know that means cool. And that always makes me laugh because it's like, you know, you put two words together that you know, storm and punk. Uh, storm punk. What the hell does that mean? I know what punk means. I know, I know what a storm is like, so, you know, you make some great analogies and you go from there. I think they did a great job with that. I think their new updates to their website has been amazing. Um, I think that they have done, you know, I guess they've done a lot of, lot of improvements and moving to that next level. They're looking to be, you know, another major player in the third-party publishing realm. And, you know, the easiest way to do that, talk to your fan base about Kickstarter. You go that route, you can build more people. And you can ask for a little bit more money. I mean, that's I think that's part of it, too. And I know they're only one day in, and I think they're at 75% of their goal. So, you know, they're, they're basically there. You know, so they'll be there within a day, if not two. And then from there is just, you know, what other cool threshold goals on top of that. So, since I'm talking about them, I will also mention, you know, we, of course, are working on our Kickstarter for Obsidian Apocalypse, uh, Cross of Fire, with the longest title ever. Cross of Fire Saga... Adventure Path for Pathfinder. I mean, these are any longer. So we're working on that. I'm still getting artwork in. Um, we got another piece back in through the artist for about Cassandra. We put that up yesterday so people could take a little more refined look. But the next time go around, that'll be probably the final one, and that will go up. And that piece will also go on the Kickstarter. It's important we're showing it off to people. So you know, I'm, I'm working on adding little pieces left to it and stuff like that. But we basically are about. Eh, I'll say 75% done. Um, we're to the point where actually I might show it off to people. So I'm, I'm thinking about putting a preview link out there, letting people go through it, looking, you know, looking, saying, "Oh, what do the rewards look like? Oh, this is what I can get." Looking how it's set up, getting a little of the background. I'm still waiting for, like I said, a couple things, but that's it. And I, I'll tell you, of, of late, I've been doing more and more Kickstarter research and looking at ways that implementing Kickstarter um, and making more successful. Uh, just last night, I happened to notice one. Uh, I was reading something. I don't even remember what I was reading. I was reading. A, I've been reading a bunch of stuff lately, so it's easy for me to get confused. Uh, this gentleman, who's also on Tim Ferriss's website, and you guys are like, who's Tim Ferriss? Tim Ferriss is the guy who wrote the Four Hour Work Week, which I think is a great book, a lot of great ideas. And apparently, a buddy of his did a Kickstarter, and you know, he basically ran this whole thing of you know how to raise a hundred thousand dollars in ten days like well that's a lot of money you've done pretty quickly you know that's, you know what did you do so he wrote down what he did how he went about it and I, I mean I, I looked through some of it some of the stuff you already knew I mean some stuff was basic stuff but some stuff was really really inventive and I'm like oh this is kind of I've got to you know I've got to get dig deeper I gotta get deeper on this so I'll be reading it later on today getting a little more insight getting a little more focus of you know what, what what's that what's that new thing that's coming out what's what's the cool thing coming out because I think when it comes to something like Kickstarter, it is all about the connections you've made, the people you talk talked to, and stuff like that. But it's also about how cool the product is and how many people actually know about it. Because this really is about this is about numbers. 100% about how many people know you depends how much money you can get. The more people know about your Kickstarter, the more money you'll make. That's just a that's just a pure simple fact. Um, and I, I very much agree with it. I think it's I think it's very true. Um, another weird thing I've noticed with Kickstarter, and I've noticed this lately, I didn't, I didn't, it's, it's like it's popped up more and more, maybe I've just been a bit more focused on it, I've noticed that a lot of people are running 30-day Kickstarters. Now, I, while doing research, realized that a 30-day Kickstarter is actually kind of short. People are like, 30 days, that's a long time. But here's something a lot of people don't take into consideration, and I didn't take into consideration until I read it and I really sat down and thought about it. Most people, the most, most people get paid you know, once every two weeks. That's, that's very, very common. So, 14 days you get paid. And most people have certain parts of their paycheck allotted to certain things. 
I know for myself, a good majority of my, of, of like, well, you know, part of my paycheck goes to pay my mortgage. You know, this check goes to pay the mortgage, this check goes to pay this. And that's how I've broken it down in that kind of scenario. And I think most people do that too. So, my theory is, you know, my theory that I've read and I agree with is that most people have one check that's specific for their personal house bills and things like that. Then they have another check that's for their fundamentally fun things. So, you know, realistically, you should always have a concern have at least two pay periods, which, okay, that'd be 28 days. Now, me, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little, I'm a little cagey, a little, nah, I don't know, nah, uh, what happens if, you know, what happens if you have the one month, hey, I got my paycheck for regular stuff, then in the middle of the month, something happens, like with my car, you have a massive battery issue, and you got to get that repaired. That's 500 bucks you got to spend on that. Well, there goes away that little money that you possibly are going to spend on something else. So for me, I believe, okay, I don't want to go more than 45 days for a Kickstarter. Because that to me is like, I can touch it too long and drags out and people start forgetting about it and they find other reasons for stuff to back. That's the other part of the thing too. So I would say, you know, 42 days. 42 days is, you know, six good weeks. In six good weeks, you can find someone who can donate, you know, 20 bucks to you and stuff like that. During that time, they'll generate enough income due to their salary that you should be able to say, hey, we've got a Kickstarter going on, hope you can put 20 bucks in, and that shouldn't be too, too much of a thing. After six weeks, yeah, that shouldn't be, or even close to six weeks, you know, that shouldn't be a super duper issue. And that's how I've always kind of focused, I always liked that idea, it makes a little more sense to me. And, you know, 45 days, well, 42 days, it's, it's not the shortest amount of time, but it's not the longest amount of time either, you know. Some people are very much about, you know, they want it to be you know, whatever short little time. Some people want it to be 30 days. I just think 30 days is too short. I don't, like I said, I think 30 days is too, too short. You know, oh, I ran it for a month. Well, you know, you could put two more weeks into it and, and maybe push some more people. And there's that, there's that other side. And then there's the other side of the, of the actual marketing, uh, I guess it'd be tangent to it. I guess it'd be tangent, yeah. Yeah. There, there's so much other cool stuff going on that you could do to promote yourself and promote yourself in places that you may not normally promote yourself. You know, something they said last night, and I thought this was really genius. They go, go check out Kickstarters that are similar to yours. Guys that, you know, very, very similar to yours that you think would work well for you, or, or ones that you would enjoy, or, or, you, or your company, or whatever you would fall in place with. Go there and, and, like, look at the page, like, two or three of the pictures. You know, look at the page, see two or three of the pictures, and if it's artwork or something, like, you know, whatever it is, whatever the picture is. Copy that picture and drop it into Google Images. Now, a lot of people don't know this. You can basically copy an image or, or even drop and drag is more appropriately. You can select an image, drag it over in Google Images, and Google will search via that image. Now, some people don't know that, which I didn't know it for, you know, about a year ago when I found out, or I guess it's a year, I don't know. But I found out, it's like, oh, this is a cool idea. So what happens is that where that image has been used, it'll pop up places. And what usually happens, and you, as I found out last night doing this little gig, this little thing, there are certain news sites I'd never even heard about. I was like, who's this? They were talking about people's Kickstarters. The Kickstarters that I knew, and, and I didn't even know about these sites, I didn't even know these sites existed. So it was a great way to see, hey, this guy talked about this Kickstarter. I've got a Kickstarter in the same vein as this. Maybe I should send an email to this, this guy or girl to see if they want to talk about my Kickstarter. And that's, you know, those are tactics to use to help you become more successful in your Kickstarter. When I first got started, I went through all my old Kickstarters and looked at all the places that we got um, links from. I wrote, got there, went to the website, got the information. Ugh, people, why is it driving so difficult in Florida? No signal. There's so many no signal people. This drive, I don't understand that. Ugh. Like I said, so many people went through my list, checked out their emails, and made a whole list of people I'm going to email, of course about the Kickstarter and how they can help and things like that. And I think that's that's part of the research. Because, I mean, I've seen a lot of Kickstarters of late just go up. You know, it's like somebody announces, like, oh, I got a Kickstarter, it's going on now. And it's like, I didn't hear a thing about it before. I didn't see anything about it before. I didn't, you know. And let, and let me just be honest. I'm a little, I guess the word anal retentive is the best word to use here. Uh, we've been talking about Cross of Fire for at least, you know, a month and a half, if not two months. And we're not even starting the Kickstarter to October. And look, you know, I said, I've done the work on it already. I'm, i got to do the video. That's the next thing. we got to do the video. But all the preliminary stuff, we've done. We put it up there. It's up there. It's available. Blah, blah, blah. 
the video. I gotta decide exactly what I wanna do. I have an idea, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that, but I have an idea at least. You know, this this stuff is it's it's you know it's working, it's workable, there's stuff going on. But that said, it just amazes me that, you know, people just announced the Kickstarter, like, you know, oh, I'm getting a ham and cheese sandwich today for lunch. You know, that's the equivalent of how it feels to me. It's like, there's no preparation, there's no forethought, and it's like, and then you get people, oh, I'm asking for $25,000. And it's like, dude, uh, did you talk to anybody? But get, no, but I've seen other Kickstarters, and they made that money, and I'll just go up there and just, you know, I'll, I'll fake it, I'll get that money. And it's just, it's kind of sad that you see that happen a lot. I mean, it happens a lot more than you think. And, you know, the, I mean, the failure rate's still pretty high in Kickstarter. But the success rate can be really amazing if you do your prep work. You know, you spend a little time on developing a, on the on the, on the the front end. You don't have to worry about on the back end, you know, looking for people to fund you. You know, you can get that funding in day one. You know, the guys over at, um, the, the guys, they, they put in for, what was it, $5,000 for the Kickstarter? They raised 3700 in the first 24 hours. Already off to a good start. That's where you want to be. You want to be in a position of a good start. I mean, the Obsidian Apocalypse Kickstarter, you know, we have it set for $4,000. That's going to be our goal. That's going to be enough for us to cover the first adventure, not a problem, completely. Boom. But, <laughs> let me be honest. We're hoping really to raise a lot more than that. We're really hoping to raise 19000 That will cover all the adventures, all the stuff, perfectly out of pocket, not a problem, we'll all be happy. And I'm like, yay, us. And that, to me, is very, very cool. But, you know, I know 4,000 is a very reasonable goal. It's a very realistic goal we can reach. And once you reach the 4,000, you know, getting more is really about how well you market it and how well your connections are. You know, that's 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 the two-stepper. You know? And we're marketing it very well. So we make sure we can hit that 4,000 to be a success. But I definitely have other goals above that. Some other great goals above that. You know, my, my, my lovely, one of my dreams would be, of course, and this is a dream, this is not, we're not, we're not doing this yet, we haven't reached it yet, and God knows I'd love to have it, I'd love to have a Wayne Reynolds cover on this one, I mean, who wouldn't, Wayne Reynolds means quality, let's just call it like it is, you put a Wayne Reynolds cover on your product, people are going to look, because they know, Wayne Reynolds cover is a great thing, I would love to raise the money, we could possibly do something like that, that would be fantastic, I would love that. Will we? I don't know. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. But right now, we got we got we've we've got the cover at least in my head that I like to do, and we're gonna stick with that, you know, until something changes or something big happens. I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping that we get something fantastic. <laughs> you know, who wouldn't who wouldn't want to hope for something fantastic? Oh, good lord, you know, you get a Kickstarter, you ask for twelve dollars, you wake up six million. I mean, that's that's the dream. I mean, that's the you know that's the bragging right dream, but that's still the dream. You know, I mean, Green Ronin did theirs recently. You know, look how they did. They did very well. I mean, and I can't, I cannot wait for that template book to come out. I can't even lie. I am so excited to see this template book. It looks amazing. Uh, amazing. Templates are also always cool. Templates are always a good idea. Cannot wait to see the cool templates they put out in full color. Cannot wait to see it. It's going to be amazing. Um, but, you know, some people get money and then they do the exact opposite. They, they run themselves in the ground. I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about a lot of people. Like, ugh, you know, but you know who they are. You know, I, I I saw one recently that I gave money to, and I met the person. I met the person face to face, and I've seen them. And people have emailed them and asked them questions, and there's like no response. It's like ghost town. And I'm like, why don't you just write them back? I mean, send a letter. I mean, send something. You know, great example. I have somebody who wrote me something today that I totally forgot about with Obsidian Apocalypse. I'm like, oh, geez. So I'm going to write them back. Ask him some questions, and we're gonna get the ball rolling. And he's gonna be a happy person by the time it's over because I wrote the person back, I got directly involved, and it only takes a couple seconds to do that. But some people don't want to do that. I don't. I don't get that part. But there's a lot of great. There's a lot of great um, Kickstarters going on right now. Um, yeah, I just you know, Prune is the one. I, I, I that's the first one. When I saw one up yesterday. I gave him my money. I was like, thank you. Uh, who else did I see? I saw on that. I saw, um, I know, Steve over at Publishing, he also gave some money, but it's like, hey, somebody else I know. So, I mean, you know, if it's cool and it's interesting, people want to back you. I mean, people will want to back you. 
Okay, now I'm doing something stupid like I just complained about 10 seconds ago and someone else doing something stupid. Welcome to Florida. That's how stupid a driver I am. Ugh. All right. I'm going to pull you into work, of course. In my usual spot. Car number three. Love my spot. Oh, and this has been a short video, only 15 minutes. Wow. I'll well, be about to talk to you I'm walking into my office. Like that. So, yeah, you've got some really interesting Kickstarters going on. You've got some more Kickstarters coming out. Um, the guys who are doing ours, the Horsemen, oh, with Christina Stiles and Jeff Lee. Mm -hmm. They're still working on their stuff. I know the outlines are coming soon. So, we've got to work on get those outlines out. But I'm very happy. Everything's going along well. I haven't had to do much, thank God, for the least for this part. When the layout part comes, I'll be working like a madman, but that's just me. That's how, that's how I roll. All right. I'm about to walk in. Do a good day's worth of work, and I'm off. Oh, and by the way, well, before I run out, <laughs> before I run out, a lot of you know that we're having a Google Hangout tomorrow. Oh, look, a newspaper. Ugh. We're doing a Google Hangout tomorrow. So if you've got some free time, stop by our Google Hangout. Get the key in the door. Hold on. Close the door. So if you have some free time at around 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, come by and see my Google Hangout. It'll be fun. There might be cake. You never know. Alright, talk to you later.